Before we get started, I know we only have a few of us on here today, but before we get started, does anyone have any questions or is anyone having trouble hearing me or seeing the presentation? If you can just let me know all is good in the chat box, we will move forward. All right, I'm just not getting anything, so I'm guessing that means we are good to go. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Allie Farley and I am a dietitian with BCU and Massey Cancer Center. I have been working with Massey for just over two years and my role with Massey is as an active member within the integrative health team. I work not in the traditional clinic setting providing one-on-one -on -one counseling, but throughout the community offering nutrition outreach education. Our objectives today are to review the stages of transition to the new American plate as we have done over the past three weeks. Define what foods are considered whole foods. Outline the three parts of a grain. Acknowledge grain serving sizes. Identify the health promoting power of whole grains. Assess different ways to replace refined grains with whole grains. Discuss some recipes which we could be which we can incorporate into our daily meal plan. Address mindful eating and how it contributes to our health, and as we have done the past few weeks, set some goals and challenge ourselves. So let's get started. For those who have been with us over the last few weeks, this will be just a quick refresher. The American Institute for Cancer Research's New American Plate is a plant-based diet that puts the research for reducing cancer risk into action. It can be a plant-focused diet with plant foods only, or can include moderate amounts of animal-based foods. The new American plate demonstrates healthy choices for the proportion of different foods on your plate and for the portions you eat. We wanna aim for vegetables, fruits, whole grains, or beans to provide two thirds or more of each meal with one third or less coming from animal protein. This plate method emphasizes choosing foods with plenty of fiber, nutrients, and plant compounds, limits foods that increase the risk of cancer, and helps you reach and maintain a healthy weight status. However, changing dietary habits isn't always easy. A slow transition to your main goal will help increase your chances of success. I want to encourage you all to start where you are at and make small steps to transitioning to healthier food choices. As you can see from the plates on this slide, Stage one, the old American plate, includes a large portion of meat covering half, if not more, of the plate and starchy vegetables. Stage two, this is what we call our transitional plate. It's a little better with more appropriate sized portion of red meat, maybe approximately three ounces, a whole grain and vegetables. Stage three, this is the new American plate. It sets us up for better health and success in regards to following the American Institute for Cancer Research's plate method of two-thirds of your plate offering plant-based nutrients and one-third or less of animal-based protein. Stage four, this is another option, the one-pot meal, also meeting the recommendations. This plate is a great way to incorporate a lot of whole grain nutrients, vegetables, while using meat as a condiment or in small amounts just to add some additional flavor. So as I mentioned in the objectives, our goal today is to review whole grains and how we can incorporate more of these food choices into our diet. So let's first start out by defining whole foods. And when I say whole foods, I'm not talking about the market or the grocery store whole foods, but whole food choices. I talk about whole foods a lot when providing nutrition education. And what I'm referring to are food choices that may have been processed or refined as little as possible before being consumed. These foods typically do not contain a lot of added ingredients like sugar, fat, salt, or chemical flavorings. When we choose to consume foods in their natural state, such as whole grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, meat, and fish without added ingredients, we get the benefit of all the vitamins and minerals without the sometimes unhealthy added ingredients. For example, think about a natural forms of sugar coming from whole foods, like an apple. That natural sugar 
comes along with vitamins, minerals, fiber, and lots of phytochemicals, all nutrients that are beneficial for our overall health. So what is a whole grain? Well, the term whole grain means that there are three parts of the grain. For example, the germ, which is the seed for a new plant and contains B vitamins, some protein, minerals, and healthy oils, as well as the bran, which is the protective outer shell and has high in fiber and B vitamins. And then there's the endosperm, which contains starchy protein and some vitamins and minerals. These are all included within that whole grain. The refined or white grains usually have the bran and the germ removed. Examples are perhaps foods made with white flour and white rice, leaving only the starchy endosperm. There are many delicious and easy to use whole grain foods. Some popular and easy to find whole grains include oatmeal, whole wheat bread, whole grain cereal, maybe brown rice or whole wheat pasta and corn. Sometimes it's good to look for some less common ones like barley, bulgur, or even quinoa. Whole grains are better for your colon, your immune system, and can reduce your risk of chronic disease. Studies consistently find that whole grains are more pro protective than refined grains in the prevention of chronic diseases. Evidence also shows that foods containing dietary fiber, like whole grains, can decrease your risk of developing colorectal cancer, which we will address more on the next slide. The addition of whole grains to your diet may also help with losing weight or preventing weight gain. Limiting energy-dense foods and eating predominantly plant-based diet, rich in vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans can help with weight maintenance, as we have discussed over the past few weeks. Here's what you need to know about the cancer protective and health promoting power of whole grains. The American Institute for Cancer Research's third expert report, which was used to help develop the new American plate model, found strong evidence that eating whole grains daily lowers one's risk for cancer. Eating about three servings or 90 grams of whole grain foods reduces your risk of colorectal cancer by 17%. You want to look for a 100% whole grain stamp on the front of packages for cereals, breads, crackers, or even breakfast bars. Fiber and whole grains help speed the elimination of waste, which also may decrease your risk of cancer. This fast elimination reduces the time your large intestines may be exposed to cancer-causing substances. Fiber is not digested in the stomach, rather helpful bacteria in your large intestines ferment it. The production of substances from fermentation may further reduce your cancer risk. The American Institute for Cancer Research recommends eating at least 30 grams of dietary fiber per day to help lower cancer risk. Each 10 gram increase in dietary fiber is linked to a 7% lower risk of colorectal cancer. Fiber is commonly classified as soluble, which dissolves in water, or insoluble, which doesn't dissolve. So for example, soluble fiber, the type of fiber which dissolves in water, forms a gel-like material. It can help lower your glucose levels and, and as well as your blood cholesterol levels. Soluble fiber is found in oats, peas, beans, apples, citrus fruits, carrots, and even barley. Insoluble fiber, this type of fiber, promotes the movement of material through your digestive system and increases stool bulk. So it can be a benefit to those who struggle with constipation or maybe irregular stool. Whole wheat flour, wheat bran, nuts, beans, and vegetables like cauliflower and green beans are good sources of insoluble fiber. The amount of soluble and insoluble fiber differs depending on the plant food. To receive the greatest health benefits, you want to just consume a wide variety of high fiber foods. Whole grains are more than just fiber though. They also offer vitamin E, zinc, antioxidants, and copper, just to name a few. So now let's look at what serving of grains may look like. 
we touched on this a little bit during week one, but let's look at just grain options this time and try to visualize everyday items. So for example, one slice of bread, half a cup of pasta, or even cooked rice, white, wild, or brown rice is a half a cup. When you're thinking about a half a cup, maybe consider about the size of a tennis ball. Half a bagel, five whole grain crackers, couscous or quinoa. You can visualize about the size of a hockey puck or half a cup. Um, half of a pita or a tortilla. Your hot cereal such as oatmeal or cream of wheat is gonna be about three fourths of a cup. And then your cold cereals, the serving size will really vary on those. So make sure you read your nutrition label, but try to visualize about the standard size of a mouse for your computer. We want to now look at whole grains and try to swap them out or swapped refined grains out for whole grain options. So now that we know the appropriate serving size, let's focus on this topic. We can really focus on taking out our white breads, white rice, and refined ready to eat breakfast cereals with whole grain options. Transition is important, so start slow by swapping out one item at a time or even mixing refined with whole grain. For example, one fourth of a cup of white rice with one fourth of a cup of brown rice for one appropriate serving size of a half a cup of rice. Swap your refined breakfast cereals for a high fiber, whole grain cold cereal that contains at least five grams of dietary fiber. Replace white bread with bread labeled as 100% whole wheat bread. Breads can be tricky. Sometimes advertisement tries to confuse us by saying that it's perhaps wheat bread, not 100% wheat, or maybe white wheat. You want to look for 100% whole wheat. Try quick cooking whole wheat couscous or whole grain angel hair spaghetti as a base for stir fries and maybe even to thicken stews. Enjoy whole grains with each meal. Start your day with a high fiber breakfast, maybe spread some type of nut butter, peanut, almond, or cashew on a slice of whole wheat toast. Pack your lunch with fiber. Make and buy sandwiches with whole grain breads. Perhaps add leftover brown rice or whole wheat pasta to salads. Mix in some tuna or maybe even some shredded chicken, corn, chopped veggies, and then add a light vinaigrette for a one dish lunch. Enjoy whole grains for dinner. Try instant or frozen brown rice that cooks in a few minutes. Use quinoa in place of white rice or pasta. Put barley or bulgur in, in side dishes, garden salads, soups, and stews. Enjoy whole grains as a snack, too. Popcorn is considered a whole grain, and three cups of air-popped popcorn contain about 3.5 grams of dietary fiber and only 95 calories. Also try 100% whole wheat or rye crackers. Adding whole grains to our diet does not have to be difficult. We can easily substitute many whole grain options for refined grains that may have been a standard in our diet for many years. So let's take a look at a few recipes that I have made for my family and can be found within the recipe corner of our nutrition blog on Massey Cancer Center's resource page. The first one here is collard green burritos. Now I use collard green lettuce or collard green leaves for these burritos, but really any large leafy green would be perfectly fine. The ingredients for this recipe can really vary also depending on your personal preference and on what you enjoy in a burrito. The one item I wanna concentrate on here though is that it does provide brown rice as your whole grain. So if you look at my ingredients, I used large collard green leaves, some avocado, cilantro, brown rice, black beans, diced tomatoes, and sauteed onions, green peppers, and mushrooms. I also added a little bit of salsa and some shredded cheese of your choice. You wanna start out by washing your green leafy vegetable, lay your leaves flat on a cutting board, and then cut off the stems at the base. Then using a knife or a vegetable pillar, shave along the remaining part of the stem. This will really help with the rolling process. Next, you wanna prepare your filling ingredients. 
once items are ready, it is time to fill your burrito. And then after it's filled, you fold on both sides and you can enjoy. This is a great recipe where you can actually just um, eat the filling by itself as well. You don't have to eat it as a burrito. You could also steam your green leafy vegetable prior to preparing if you want more of a tender wrap rather than a crunchy wrap. The additional recipe I provided for us today is roasted acorn squash. This was actually a recipe that I used in our recipe corner for, a, for I believe, a fall edition. So I used acorn squash, which is a, traditionally a fall or winter squash, but you can just as easily use a summer squash for this recipe. So for example, zucchini would be great to fill with the filling used in this recipe. It makes a lot of filling as well, and the filling is great by itself. When I prepared this recipe, I actually only filled two halves of acorn squash and then used the filling throughout the week with other meals and recipes. So what the recipe calls for is actually three large acorn squash, one medium onion, um, some chopped celery, a large apple peeled and cut into small cubes, and some garlic, and then some cooked quinoa, which provides your whole grain, as well as some protein, some dried cranberries, a half a cup of pecans, some olive oil, and then black pepper and salt to your liking. You wanna start out by preheating your oven to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit and line a baking sheet with parchment paper. You're gonna cut your squash in half, remove the seeds or some of the insides, and use two tablespoons of olive oil to brush the inside and outside of your squash. You're gonna line the squash cut side down on your baking sheet and roast for about 40 minutes. Let the squash cool for five minutes prior to stuffing. While your squash halves are roasting, you can prepare your stuffing. Heat about a tablespoon of olive oil in a large pot or a medium high heat. Begin sauteing your onions and celery and the olive oil, stirring frequently for approximately five minutes. You're gonna add your cute apples and continue to cook until apples are nice and soft. You can then stir in your garlic for an additional 30 seconds, add your cooked quinoa, cranberries, pecans, and salt and pepper. Once everything is added, you wanna decrease your heat to medium low and stir until well combined. You're gonna cook your mixture for approximately about eight to 10 minutes, stirring occasionally and you're gonna fill your squash halves and enjoy. Like I mentioned before, this makes a lot of stuffing, so feel free to eat it on its own, not stuffed in a squash with other recipes throughout the week. Before talking about our goals and challenges today, for our last session of this webinar series, I wanted to briefly address mindful eating. Over the past three weeks and today, we talked about foods to eat more and less often and then also address guidelines for how much to eat for sustaining good health. To be successful with the recommendations, we all need to explore mindful eating. According to the Center for Mindful Eating, mindfulness in eating includes allowing yourself to become aware of the positive and nurturing opportunities that are available through food selection and preparation. Using all your senses, and choosing to eat food that is both satisfying to you and nourish, nourishing to your body. Acknowledging responses to food without judgment, likes and dislikes. Becoming aware of physical hunger and satiety cues to guide your decisions to begin and end eating. Try asking yourself these six questions prior to eating or while preparing your meals for the day. Why do I eat? When do I want to eat? What do I eat? How do I eat? How much do I eat? And where do I invest my energy? Exploring why we eat and being mindful about eating and being active helps us to make better choices. Hunger can be in touch, hunger. We can really be in touch with our hunger signals if we pay attention. Your goal is to feel comfortably hungry before a meal or snack. Feeling satiety, stop eating once comfortably satisfied, but not overly full. Emotions, sadness, stress, 
anger, lonely, boredom, and tired, tiredness. Currently, we can probably all relate to some of these emotions considering our current situation being quarantined and kind of changing our daily routines. When you're having these emotions, use the acronym HALT, H-A-L-T. Ask yourself, am I hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? Be aware of your emotions that trigger overeating and disassociate eating for relief or comfort. Find non-food related treats to comfort and celebrate. Reward and rejuvenate yourself and others. Walk, maybe water, or water some flowers or plant some flowers, take a hot shower or a bubble bath, watch a movie, read a book, or play cards. Try to keep in mind that relaxation and creativity are essential to your well-being. Taste. It's easy to overeat both great tasting foods and foods that taste so good. If a food tastes really good and is made with quality ingredients, eat it and enjoy it, but be aware of portion and proportion. External cues. We see and smell food everywhere. Things are supersized, value meals, bulk deals. Be mindful of how these cues affect your desire to eat. Truly, the bottom line is be a mindful, savvy eater. Ask, is this food good for me? Are the calories worth eating? Be active in some way every day. So for today, like we have done in the past few years, these are just some goals that maybe touch on our discussion. Goal one could be, I will aim to eat three or more portions daily of whole grains. Two, try to ask myself why. Mindful, be mindful about food choices and hunger cues. And then goal three, really concentrating on physical activity. I will spend 30 minutes doing a new physical activity at least two to three days a week. Take pictures, be proud of your plate, try new recipes, really challenge yourself and others to meet the same goals you have made for yourself. So in review, we want to aim for vegetables, fruits, whole grains, or beans to provide two thirds or more of each plate with one third or less coming from animal protein. Whole foods are foods that are processed or refined as little as possible before being consumed. We want to eat about three servings or 90 grams of whole grain foods per day to reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. Look for that stamp, 100% whole grains on the front of packages. Swap out refined grains for whole grains and enjoy whole grains with each meal and snack. Ask yourself why. Being mindful about eating and being active helps us make better choices. As I've mentioned the past few weeks, try to set goals, challenge yourself to help make a transition to the new American plate success. Check out more recipes on our nutrition blog and continue to ask questions as, as they may arise. So as we've done in the past few weeks, this is the time if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm also going to pull up a poll right now that if you don't mind just to respond to the poll really quickly so we know how the presentation went for you today. Also, I encourage you to, if you have any suggestions or about topics for future webinars, if you could just type them into the chat box that would be great. Um, or if you have any recommendations on how we can better meet your needs throughout these webinars, that would be wonderful too. All right. Thank you for completing that poll. Not seeing any questions right now. If you do end up watching this on Facebook and a question does arise, feel free to either type in the comment box of the Facebook post or send me an email, which you can see my email on this slide right here. All right. 
Well, this was our final session for this webinar series. We definitely hope to provide some more webinar series. Um, a possible meal planning one is in the works starting the last Monday of June. We'll definitely send out more information once we have everything kind of set in stone. Um, I thank you all so much for participating today or participating in previous weeks as well. Um, and I hope you all were able to get some great information out of this full webinar series. Thank you so much and everyone take care and stay safe.